I want to share with you my telling of my great-grandmother, Margaret Garabedian Dermanuelian's life. There was a historic Armenian civilization that at one time extended across Anatolia. In 1915, genocide virtually ended this ancient civilization. My great-grandmother was one of the few to survive. Genocide is the deliberate and systematic destruction, in whole or in part, of an ethnic, racial, religious, or national group. The Armenian Genocide was the first modern genocide. It was a prototype for the Holocaust and set the standard for manipulating new technologies for mass murder. Trains and telegraphs were new and innovative advances that much of the world celebrated. For the Ottoman Turks, such inventions made it possible for them to send orders across the Anatolian plain to round up and execute or deport Armenians. Mass murder made easy. The Armenian Genocide began under the cover of World War I. On April 24, 1915, over 200 Armenian leaders were arrested in Constantinople. Hundreds more were detained in the following weeks. They were sent to prison in the interior of Anatolia, where most were executed, and the remaining men were placed in work battalions. This marked the beginning of the genocide. In the months to come, women, children, and the elderly were forced from their homes across Anatolia. They were murdered, abducted, and deported. Most were forced to walk through the desert with no food, clean drinking water, or proper clothing. The majority of Armenians perished in the desert, with only a few surviving the extreme conditions forced upon them. Even today, the desert, Der El Zor, is littered with the bones of Armenians who perished between 1915 and 1918. Those left in Anatolia were forced to leave after the Republic of Turkey was established, and the new Turkish leader, known as Atatürk, commanded that Anatolia be rid of all Armenians. By 1923, a 3,000-year-old civilization virtually ceased to exist. One and a half million Armenians more than half of the Armenian population in its historic homeland were dead. Despite the affirmation of the Armenian Genocide by historians and governments around the world, the Turkish government still actively denies the Armenian Genocide. Among a series of actions enacted to counter genocide recognition, the government even passed a law in 2004 which makes it a criminal offense to discuss the genocide. Most of the survivors have now passed their families still continue to demand recognition for the suffering inflicted upon their beloved ancestors more than 95 years ago. In 1915, my family became the victims of the Armenian Genocide. My great-grandmother was eight years old when the genocide began in Ottoman Turkey. Why did this happen to my people, to my family? and to millions of others across the globe and over the course of human history during other genocides? How can we as humans commit such an unspeakable crime? How can we as humans 
witness such outrages against our brothers and sisters? These are questions we must try to answer if we want to stop future genocides from occurring. Before I was born, Margaret agreed to have her story recorded. I want to share with you some of her recollections. She lived with her family in the small village Uzunova Mezre in the province of Diyarbakir. In 1915, her entire life changed. Her parents, three sisters, and her extended family were murdered. She was abducted into slavery and tortured for years. In 1922, her older sister, the only other survivor from her family, found Margaret and helped her escape. After a long journey, Margaret found her way to Rhode Island with her new husband and child. It was only when she reached Rhode Island that she could slowly begin to build a real life for herself and her family. Armenian folk tales end with the phrase, Three apples fell from heaven, one for the storyteller, one for he who listens, and one for he who understands. Margaret told the story. My family and I have listened. Now you have heard the story. Understanding history is our collective responsibility. Remembering the victims of past genocides and by taking action to prevent future genocides from occurring will best measure our commitment. My grandmother, mother, and I are deeply affected by Margaret's experiences and the destruction of our culture. We speak Armenian, go to Armenian church, and try to educate those around us about the Armenian genocide. We want Margaret and all the victims to be remembered, and we want our culture to survive. Most importantly, 
We hope for the day when no one ever has to suffer what our people endured. With the Armenian Americans of Providence, my family joined together and unveiled a monument to the victims of the Armenian Genocide. The dedication on the memorial reads, We Armenians dedicate this monument to the immortal memory of the 1,500,000 Armenian martyrs massacred by the Turkish government during the 1915 genocide. From this faith, no one can shake us, neither angels nor men, neither sword nor fire, nor water or any blows, however bitter they be. Battle of Avarair 451 A.D.